Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 11th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering footstep sounds and some background ambience. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help me a part of this channel. And you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So the idea of adding footstep sounds in is not difficult, it's not simple, but it's kind of cool because I want to demonstrate something that is in coding that you can kind of do, and that's randomization. And what I want to do is have four footstep sounds that we could choose from, and I want a script to randomize which footstep sound we will play one after the other. And obviously if we're running, that footstep sound gets quicker and quicker. So let's start by importing some um, assets, and we're going to import a couple of different ones. What I'm going to do is in the audio folder, I'm going to right click, create, a uh, new folder, I'll call this BGM. And what I'm going to import first is just some background ambience that I've decided to use from this. You don't have to use this, you can use any type of music if you want, if you want music at all, that is. Uh, and it's just this level ambience. I'm just going to drag and drop into here. And as always with these assets, go to the pinned comments, you can download it all there for free. And I'm going to go to our global object. Uh, in fact, no, there's no point is that we may as well have it on the uh, play capsule. So let's go to audio on the play capsule, right click, create empty, and let's have this as BGM and drag and drop onto there. And what I'll do is I will loop and I'm going to lower the pitch a little bit, lower the volume a little bit, press play and just quickly see how this sounds. But, you know, play around with these settings yourself if you want to. So we've got some kind of audio to it now. Maybe increase it a touch. Okay, so yeah, that's quite low. So let's increase that to about there, volume to about there, and that should probably do. So next thing we're going to do is import the audio sound. So in the effects, I'm going to right click, create another folder and have this as footsteps. And in there now, I'm going to drag and drop the other four files from that zip file. Remember, unzip everything before you try importing it into Unity. Next, on the effects folder down here, I'm going to right click, create empty, and have this as footsteps. And in there, I'm going to right click, create empty again, and have this as zero, one. And then drag and drop the first one onto there and then untick play on awake. And then hold control and press D just a couple of times, so we have four in total. Rename them to zero 02, zero 03, and zero 04. And you've guessed what comes next. Yeah, just drag and drop them onto those audio files. So they are now ready to use in our scene. Perfect. So the key to all of this is creating the script that will allow us to randomize the aspect of which foot sound to play. So it'll take a little bit of modification as we go along, you know, depending how quickly you want your footsteps to play. Um, like I think we'll start with maybe a footstep every 0 0.6 seconds when we're walking and 0 0.3 when we're running and we'll see how that sounds. So let's go to scripts. Let's click on create and let's go to um, new script. We'll call this uh, footsteps. Quick and simple. And let's head into Visual Studio. I don't know why it's decided to go into it and not actually open the script. Uh, it seems to be compiling. Just give Unity a moment to compose itself. And then let's go into the footsteps script. So a couple of variables we're going to need in this one. So let's go to the top and let's start with serialize field. And this will be a audio source. And we'll have this as F1, F just being short for footstep. So then we can do the same and it's already predicted. We're doing two and then three and then four. You could theoretically use an array for this, but we haven't dealt with arrays yet, but there is many better ways of kind of 
introducing you to an array in scripting a little later on. So we'll be doing it then, not now, because we only have, only have four audio files that we need. Uh, the next thing we need is a bool, so true or false, to say, are we playing an audio sound? And if not, well, play one, basically. So that will be serialized field, and that will be a bool, and we'll call it is stepping semicolon. Now, this is all going to be done inside a, um, I forgot what it's called. Coroutine, there we go. So it's done inside a coroutine, and what we'll start with is just walking as normal. And then we'll introduce the idea of we are running, so we need to play, uh, play the same things, but at a different speed. So we'll start by going below void update, and we'll say I enumerator, and uh, oh, sorry, name brackets. We need to call it something first, don't we? Um, foot step. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And the first thing we're going to want to do is think about what we need to do. So I'm going to go down a couple of lines and we'll say uh, yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll put 0.6f close bracket semicolon. So just like we have with our handgun fire, if you remember, we had the coroutines of being able to do something, wait, and then continue. And the same thing needs to happen here with these footsteps. So we need to play a footstep, then we need to hold off for, uh, well, in this case, 0.6 seconds, and then continue. So the very last thing we're going to put on here is going to be, is stepping equals false, because that will be the end. And I know we're going kind of back and forth between different parts of coding. We're not writing it in order. And this is a good uh, way of demonstrating how you can go back and forth in coding to do different things depending on what you're doing. Because the next thing that we need to do is create a integer and generate a number one to four. So let's go back to our variables and we'll say serialize field int and we'll have this as sound number semicolon um, what it means is that um, we need to establish basically we only play the sounds when we're walking so we now need to go to void update and we need to say if and in brackets input dot get key down and in brackets key code dot w because we are pressing w uh, double close bracket but we are going to come back to that in just a moment um, if we go to the uh, handgun fire one and up here just here is it so remember where we put input dot get mouse button down that was basically to use the mouse button but we never used it to try and get what keys we were pressing on the keyboard and this is how you would do it you would say input dot get key, or in our case, because we want to know it's being held down, we say get key down. Um, and then open curly bracket. And here what we say is, is stepping equals true, semicolon. And then we also say uh, start coroutine and in brackets, foot, step, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Uh, I am going to get rid of void start, the annotations now, because they're just in the way. Now, at this point, this is where things start getting a little bit complicated because we're going to have to start nesting some functions and creating alternatives, much like we did with when our handgun is out of ammo. And what I mean by nesting and um, getting that working is if we are pressing the W key, we now also need to check, are we currently stepping or not? So that means that after this open curly bracket, we now need to say if is stepping equals false, close bracket and open curly bracket, hit return, get rid of the close curly bracket. And then after the coroutine line right there, put the curly bracket. And what that will do is it will check if we are pressing the, key, the W button and then are we stepping? Are we currently stepping? Then if we're not, 
then set it as true, but also start that coroutine. And what that coroutine will do is currently it will wait for 0 0.6 seconds and then it will set stepping as false again. So we need to use this opportunity to determine what exactly footstep sound we're going to play. And we can do that by after saying is stepping equals true, generating a random number. So what we'll do is sound number equals random dot range and we'll say the minimum and maximum. So the minimum is going to be a one because we want footstep sound one and the maximum is actually going to be five. Now because we're generating this as an integer it will never generate that maximum number. It will always generate the one before it as a, an example. So for example having one and five means it will always generate one, two, three or four. If you had 10 footstep sounds, you would put this number as 11 because it would generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. It would never generate 11. So four footstep sounds means we need a range of four. So there is four between one and five. So one, two, three, four. So we can close bracket, semicolon. At this point, we have uh, the stepping is true. We've generated a number. We've started the coroutine. What does the coroutine do? Well, the coroutine now needs to know what the number is in sound number. And if it's number one, then play footstep sound one. So we can say if, and in brackets, a sound number equals one, open curly bracket, then do this. And that is f one dot play. And then we repeat that four, two, three, and four. So I'm just gonna paste those below. So it's currently all the same. So let's change that to two, change that to two, change this to three, change this to three, change that to four, and change that to four. Now, at this point, what is happening, if I save that, is everything we actually need for walking sound effects. It'd be perfectly fine. We need to modify it a little bit further on in this tutorial, obviously because we could be walking backwards, side to side, whatever, uh, and also we could be running. So for now, what it means is that if we head back into Unity, and let's drag and drop the footstep sounds onto the player capsule, and then let's head down and just set those four footstep sounds. So one, and two, and three, and four. And as we do this, you will see this number here changes. So every time we make a step, it will change. So let's press play and see how this works out. Give it a moment just to compile everything together. And let me scroll down so we can see this number. And here we go. Okay, so what's happened there? Let's have a look what's happened. It played once, but then didn't do the rest. So... I think we should change this from get key down to maybe just get key. Maybe that will work. There are different ways you can use the input on this. And I think maybe that was it. I think. So if you have issues with the input dot get key down, it could be that you just need to change it to get key. So let's quickly check. There we go. Perfect. So that seems like it's working just fine. So next thing we need to do is we need to kind of modify this script even more to make sure that we can use the S key, A key, D key. And then we need to modify it once again to say, are we running? And that requires a little bit more information. Uh, and essentially it just means, are we pressing multiple keys essentially? So. Let's see if we can get this all done nice and quick. So on the input.getKey uh, key code W, what we need to put is a double bar. And the reason we put a double bar is because this means or. So we're saying if input.getKey down is W or input.getKey is S or, so double bar once again, input.getKey is A Oops, if I didn't, if I press the right button there. <laughs> and finally, if it is D. So what we're saying now is that if the input is either W, S, A, or D, then we can do this, no problem. Also now what we need to establish is are we holding down the shift button? 
And what we need to kind of work out here is essentially the shift button, like I said, is um, the, the way of saying that we are running because we set that running uh, in, in the settings a little, uh, was it? No, it was last tutorial, wasn't it? So if I just quickly show you what I mean, let me undo that. There we go. So back in here, if you remember, on player capsule, the running speed or sprint speed in this case is 18. And what it means is that it's, well, 1.8 times faster. So obviously we need to not, maybe I'm going to use double at this point, but you could use an 80% increase in your number. And what I mean by that is we have 0.6 as our walking. I'm going to use 0.3, but if you want to be accurate, you maybe want to use 0.35. So what we need to do is uh, you've got that in place. So down here, uh, after we have f4.play, we need to say if input.get key, and then in brackets, we say key code left shift and then open curly bracket and hit return and we need to put the close cur the sorry close bracket there if you have any problems with this script as i always say you can go to the pinned comment where you've got the footstep sounds and you can download this script as well so we're saying if input has the shift down it means that we need to say I uh, yield, return new, wait for, if I can spell it right, seconds, and in brackets, 0 0.3, and we'll see how that sounds uh, with the F, because it is a float, semicolon. And then after that close curly bracket there, we will hit return and say else, and then open curly bracket, hit return. And then we'll copy, or rather cut, this line here, and place it here get rid of that extra empty line. So what we're saying is that we're playing a footstep sound, cool, but if we are holding shift, then it means we're running. So we only wait for 0 0.3, and then we say his stepping is false. If we're not holding shift, we do for six because it means we're walking. So if we save that script now, and then head back into Unity, give it a moment just to compile, we won't technically need to do anything else to our script or our variables because it's all there. We just need to press play and see how this works. So firstly, what we'll do is we will use the uh, WASD keys and just make sure that we do walk and play sound in all directions. Yep. Excellent. So now let's try running. Cool. Perfect. And that is how quick and easy it actually is to create footstep sounds for a controller. And this can be used for any controller that you import into Unity, even one you've created yourself, because the premise of it works just by detecting what keys you're holding down. And that is a real quick, genius way to get footstep sounds into your game in Unity. Next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a target system for us to start shooting at because we've got that ray cast in place. And we'll also start with no gun, but we'll place it on like maybe this um, crate over here that we can go and pick up. Uh, because like I say, we've got that ray cast in place, so we need to know we're close to the gun to pick it up. So remember to subscribe, click that notification bell, to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I'll see you next time.